Just a few words. <laughs> really, in order to properly thank everyone and acknowledge everyone, I probably did something about ten times that length, but we'll keep it short and sweet. Um, you know, anyhow, it's always a little bit dangerous giving a, a graduate of rabbinical school a microphone. <laughs> but uh, nonetheless, I will uh, try to keep it uh, short and sweet. Uh, I guess just to kind of share with you a few personal experiences, um, rather than to to uh, bore you with some of the technical stuff. Um, how I got started in this uh, actually goes back to a summer camp job, and I found myself in a position. Uh, running a waterfront uh, for individuals with profound special needs. So my job was to get individuals safely out of a wheelchair into a life jacket and then into the boats or into the swimming pool in order to experience the fun things that we tend to take for granted. And it's no small task to get person safely out of a wheelchair and in, into water situations, you can imagine. And at any rate, I had this one child uh, who was confined to a short body that just didn't work well. And he had little arms, little appendages for arms kind of sticking out at his side. He was about 19 years old, very frail and also very stiff. And it would take three lifeguards it was a whole process to get somebody out of a wheelchair like that and, and into a life jacket. And then I would take him to the water and I would hold him in the shallow end to try to get his arms and legs moving. And I always wondered, each time we did that, was it worth the effort? Like, what is this, what is, what is he getting out of this experience? Am I just bothering him? Uh, put it, is it a painful experience? And Less than 30 seconds, pretty soon his whole body would start to shiver because the water was kind of cold. And you, know, you can imagine an outdoor, uh, big, loud, large outdoor pool at a summer camp up in New York State. And as I was holding him, and I was telling him, okay, you're doing a great job, and I don't know what, if anything, is sinking in, and trying to move his little arms and legs. Um, well, the good Lord sent a horse fly to hit, land on my back. And I'm holding, I don't know if you've ever had that experience of getting nailed by a horse fly, <laughs> but they hurt. And I'm holding it, and all of a sudden it went, <clears throat> like that. And this person who I'm holding in my arms in the water suddenly went, <laughs> 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 and quite frankly, it just, he, he just blew my mind. And, I had to control myself because I almost started crying on the spot and then he thought I was totally nuts. But not only was he processing what I was doing, what I was saying to him, and I just couldn't understand that, but he had a sense of humor. And so I then became uh, the three stooges in one incarnated and used slapstick and he loved slapstick. So I would slip and fall in the dining room, I'd walk into walls just to get a, a, a laugh, a reaction out of this one student. And he taught me a very valuable lesson, and that obviously is that sometimes things aren't always what they seem to be. They're not always what the eye seems to process. And I'd just like to share with you one other experience that um, uh, in my master's degree program at Buffalo State College, uh, I had an amazing professor who also was a very creative teacher. And to this day, I use a lot of his techniques with my students, also with my college students. And he wrote two concepts up on the board. One was FID, F-I-D, and one was GOK, G-O-K. And then he had told us in the class, we were all graduate students, and he said, I went, look out the window and tell me what do you see? Well, across from Buffalo State College was Buffalo State Hospital. Notorious for years ago for using shock therapy, but it wasn't uh, considered to be too professional. And it always looked like a foreboding place to me. It had bars on the windows, and you would literally see the people in the white coats running around. 
uh, and it was a scary place. And so he said, what do you see? Well, we knew what we were looking at. And he said, he asked us, what's the difference between you and them? You sitting in this room and the individuals sitting behind the bars in that facility. So no one dared offer a response. And he said, well, it all is attributed to Finn and Gok. Finn, he explained, and he, he said to us, that I hope you'll be able to use these concepts as you go into special education. It was a graduate program in special ed. And they, these two have become my Bible, the, the two, I think, central commandments of my teaching. He said, we all, there's nobody perfect, so we all have idiosyncrasies, we all have hang-ups, we all have problems, we all have learning disabilities, we all, we're all special needs. The only problem is fit. The reason why they're in there and you're in here, he says, they do it F more frequently, I greater intensity, D longer duration of time. So really we're kind of all in the same boat. And then the second concept, which I think is, is perhaps even more profound, he said that when all is said and done with a given child, when everyone has had their say, the psychologists and the therapists and the principals and the teachers and the parents and the siblings and all the significant others, in terms of what this child can do and what this child will become and what he or she is able to do is God. God only knows. <laughs> <laughs> and I just thought that was absolutely brilliant. Um, I would uh, be remiss, first I want to thank my uh, four colleagues. I uh, honestly wonder what I'm doing amongst your company, and uh, it's an honor to be with you, uh, to just to get recharged the batteries in your presence. So God bless you, and keep up your wonderful work, and I look forward to networking with you all from here on in. And I want to thank uh, my parents who are out there, if you could just wait a little bit. My mom and dad came from Buffalo, who taught me all the really important things in life. And uh, I say that from, from the bottom of my heart. I want to thank my wife, Gittel, for putting up with me for 30-some years. I think we have to give you the purple heart. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, thank my dear friends, Marsha and Ira, who came in all the way from Florida to be with me. If you can just wave hello, please. And Marsha and I co-taught at middle school in Miami. Uh, Marsha's an exemplary teacher. And uh, hats off to you, Marsha. What an amazing career. And I want to thank my hosts, the Millers. If you could just raise your hands, please. You guys are awesome. Congratulations, as we say, Mazel Tov, and your daughter, amazing daughter, Lauren. Happy birthday tomorrow. Also, my parents, six, what is it, uh, your anniversary? Two days? One. At 61? Holy moly. <laughs> <laughs>